All right, good evening and welcome to the Planning Commission of the City of Moreno Valley. I now call the meeting to order on uh, June 26th, uh, 27th, excuse me, uh, 2019 at 7.05 p.m. Uh, may we have the roll call, please. Commissioner Rafael Brugueras? Yes. Commissioner Joanne Steven? Present. Commissioner Robert Harris? Here. Commissioner Alvin DeJanay? Here. Commissioner Vice Chair Ray Baker? Yes, here. Commissioner Patricia Corsick? Present. Chairperson Sims? Here. Okay, uh, Pledge of Allegiance will be by Rafael Garris. Please stand, face the flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. With liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Raphael. Okay. Okay, we're uh, now uh, ready to move for the approval of the agenda. Do we have any movers today? I'll move to approve the agenda as submitted. Okay, we have a first by. A second. We have a second. Um, please vote. We have a 6 0 with a abstention. That, oh, Bergeris, that's right. Okay. Um, all right, the motion carries. Okay, so public comment uh, procedure any person wishing to address the commission on any matter, either under the public comments section of the agenda or scheduled items or public hearings, must fill out a request to speak form available at the door when you walk in. The completed form must be uh, submitted to the secretary prior to the agenda item being called by the chairperson. Speaking to the commission, members of the public may be limited to three minutes per person except for the applicant for entitlement. The commission may establish an overall time limit for comments on a particular agenda item. Members of the public must direct their questions to the chairperson of the commission and not to other members of the commission, the applicant, the staff, or the audience. Uh, the next item is public comments on any item not on the agenda. So is there any, do we have any speakers? No, sir. No. All right. The next item on the agenda is approval of the consent calendar. Do we have a, uh, a motion? Mm -hmm. That would, I guess, be just for the, uh, wait, what do we have to, uh, no. Looking for the uh, approval of the consent calendar, which is just the minutes from May 23. I vote approval of the consent calendar. Okay. We have a second. Is that a motion, Commissioner? Oh, I'm Commissioner? sorry. I moved to move. <laughs> I'll second that. Are we, are we good with that, or do, or do we need to say the minutes? No, that's fine. The whole right. consent calendar can be taken as one. All right, so we have a first and second. Uh, please vote. Right, it was proved six, uh, six uh, with six yeses and one abstention. Okay. All right, the next item on the agenda is: Do we have any uh, yeah, uh, non non public hearing items? Which we have none. So, next item is for public hearing items, and item one is case PEN nineteen dash zero 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 five. So, staff, if we have any. Uh, um, yes, if I may, as a matter of fact, we'd like to make a slight modification to the recommendation. We've asked for uh, a continuance of the item to the July 11th meeting in the agenda, um, but we would ask that the commission uh, extend a, an extension to a date unspecified to ensure that we have the information before we actually reschedule for uh, the next hearing, and we would re-notice at that point as well. How does that work with uh, on the notice? If it goes, is there a certain amount of when you post it, or if it's if it's officially continued, the notice um, 
of the hearing and, and whatnot, does that just continue on? Do they have to re-notice it or? For a continuation, there is not a requirement to re-notice in this case because we'll be continuing to an unspecified date. We would re-notice. Okay. Does that answer your question? All right, so we have a, a staff report. Um, any questions? Well, I, I, I guess on this, do we need to open it for public hearing? E yes, it, you could still open it for public comment, uh, but um, what the staff is at, the motion staff is ask, asking for is to continue it to an unspecified date. Okay. But yes, you still would take public All right. comment on it. All right, that. so um, uh, uh, open, this, uh, open this item up for public comment if there's any. Do we have any speakers? No, sir. Okay, then I close the public hearing. Okay, any uh, discussion by the commissioners? Okay, well then we're looking for a motion to uh, continue this to some unspecified time. I motion to move it, to reschedule it. To continue, please. To continue. I just, it's to, to an, an unspecified, unspecified date. Specify. Date. 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 Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have a second. I'll second that. Okay, we have a first and a second. Please vote. Okay, that was approved 7 0. Okay, any uh, staff wrap up on that? Or uh, no, no wrap up. We will re notice, and you'll see this on a future agenda. Thank you. Okay, case number two is. Uh, Case number PEN 19-0004. It's <coughs> um, uh, regarding the Towngate uh, Community Shopping Center. So if there's staff, uh, I'd like to give a... We do have a staff presentation that will be made by Associate Planner Jeff Bradshaw, please. Good evening, Chair Sims, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, the item uh, before you this evening, conditional use permit PEN 19-0004. Uh, is a request to develop uh, what is the last remaining pad site of the Towngate Community Shopping Center. Uh, and as you can see on the exhibit here, uh, the parking lot improvements and, and really all the, uh, the uh, pads within the center have already been developed up to this point. Uh, the request uh, from, from the applicant would be to uh, develop a fast or a coffee shop or restaurant of just under 3,000 square feet on that pad uh, and in this case add a drive through element to, to that use. The center where it's located at the southwest corner of, of the 60 off ramp in uh, Frederick Street has a general plan designation of commercial and the uh, complementary zoning there is commercial within the Towngate specific plan. The, the use that's proposed this evening uh, the restaurant use is permitted. However, with the request for the drive-through, uh, it does require the approval of a conditional use permit by the Planning Commission, and that's because of its proximity to the residential that you can see there to the southeast. When you measure from the, the two corners, it, it just falls within that 300-foot limit uh, in, in the rear yard of the, of the homes that you see there to the southeast. And so uh, that is what we're presenting to you this evening, uh, the plans that have been, par been prepared by the applicant uh, and the content of the staff report that supports uh, the findings that we have made that would suggest that this is an appropriate location for this use. Uh, the project as proposed uh, will develop uh, this pad area, uh, which was originally, pr um, originally approved for development of a retail or restaurant building of up to 7,000 square feet. In this case, they're able to take advantage of the existing location to place this building, a much smaller building, at 2,479 square feet and have room for the drive-through. In this case, they were able to actually design the drive-through to exceed our, our queuing uh, requirements for the drive-through lane. So rather than uh, the eight, they're able to actually provide 12, uh, 12 spaces within the drive-through. Um, The design of the structure, I think, is consistent with, uh, with retail um, drive-up locations that you've seen for other Starbucks locations. The, 
the developer worked with the city to come up with a finish in a combination of materials and colors that's complementary to the center and appropriate both to uh, the requirements of the specific plan as well as to uh, our municipal code requirements for commercial development. The project then is designed and conditioned would, would, would satisfy um, the findings for conditional use permit as, as those have been um, stated in the resolution attached to the staff report. Staff has completed uh, an independent review of the project uh, and examined its potential uh, for environmental impacts and determine uh, that it does not have the potential for impacts at this, uh, does not have the potential for s significant effects on the environment. And in this case, because of the size of the parcel qualifies as a categorical exemption, a class 32 infill exemption in this case. Um, to go back just a step, the, the outlined area on, on the land use exhibits as well as the map shows a parcel of approximately one and a quarter acres the pad area is, is, is less than a half acre in size. And so the, uh, the amount of development that's already occurred as well as the size of the parcel um, easily make this uh, an appropriate determination of, of exemption under the California Environmental Quality Act guidelines. Uh, we, we did complete our standard noticing for this project. Uh, notice of the public hearing was, was published in the newspaper, the site was posted, and notices were sent out to adjacent property owners. And as of this evening, staff has received no inquiries about the project. With that, uh, staff would recommend approval of the project uh, and uh, recognition of the environmental determination as presented to you in the staff report. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. And Paul Bernard uh, is also here representing the project with the Fritz Duda Company. Thank you. Is there uh, any questions by the commissioners of uh, staff? I have a question. I have a question. Is the applicant required to put any cameras on the outer part of the of the building, considering that people would be coming off the freeway, you know, and making a right, you know, and that corner has his own elements, especially with the Seven Eleven across the street and the gas station there. And I know that it could happen um, that we're going to have um, wanderers wandering over to the light for 24 hours. So the, uh, to, to, to answer your question, the city does not currently have a requirement uh, where we could require security cameras of, of, of a project. Uh, it's something I think that's encouraged and recommended by our police department each time a new project goes through the review process. But there are currently no conditions or requirements on this project for, for security cameras. I have one more. Are they going to have security in the evening since it's 24 hours? Uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I'll defer, to, I think, to, our, to Paul Bernard to, to respond to that for you when, when he has an opportunity to speak. Any other questions before we hear the applicant? Okay, I think uh, if the applicant would like to come up and make a presentation. Commission members, my name is Paul Bernard. I want to thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm with the Fritz Studio Company, and uh, we are the representative for the owner of uh, Dallas Plaza Partners, which is Towngate Plaza. Um, I also want to thank staff very much for working diligently to help us get to tonight's meeting. Uh, we've got some time constraints with the tenant. Uh, and it was very important that we make it tonight and the staff work double time to uh, to make that happen. So I want to thank them and their efforts um, to answer the uh, nighttime security question. Uh, we uh, we own this shopping center, portions of uh, Towngate uh, Square, Towngate Promenade and Towngate Crossing. Uh, and we do have security that roams. We have uh, roaming security that, uh, that that travels all times of the day. Uh, we, we do switch times for the centers so it's not consistent. So people can't say, okay, well, they're here at, at two in the afternoon right. and two in the morning. So we do switch that up, but it is, we, we do have security through, throughout the 24 hour period for all of our properties. So it'll be yes. The Correct. Make sure that everything is going well. Correct. In that time of period. Yeah, yeah. It's and that also be early morning hours. All times of the 24-hour period, yes, okay, sir. Great, thank you. Yeah. 
I have a question. Yes. Um, is there going to be a fence at all on the outer side of the property? No, there, there will be no fences. There, there will be um, screening uh, with landscape that is uh, one of the conditions of approval. Uh, that will assist both from a pedestrian uh, perspective and also from uh, lights from the cars in the drive through uh, to prevent the, the headlights shining out onto Frederick. Well, um, so you will, you will have landscaping to prevent. Uh, my concern was that since the property has been vacant there, that land has been vacant for many years, I do know that a lot of people cross through there right now. So because they're, they've got a habit of doing that, I was just concerned with them still doing that mm -hmm. just to cut through. Sure. And so that's why I was asking if there was going to be any kind of fencing or any kind of like deterrent so from we, them being able to do that. We actually, th there will be landscape in that area, but what we actually did, and we worked with the city on this, um, there is a, a connection that, that doesn't quite connect from the property to the city right of way. Uh, at the, I guess it would be the, the southern end between, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll point. Uh, it was for us to create a, a walking path there so people would have access from the sidewalk into the property at a, at a more convenient location. Okay. I, I mean, it doesn't matter really if there is or isn't because you guys have to take care of the, the fact of the security there. I was just kind of wondering because, like I said, for many years, people have just used it. They have. Yeah. Cameras. We live in an age where cameras are important for law enforcement, for customers, for property owners, everything's a camera. Now, you know, even inside the facility, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure if you're gonna have a camera in there just to watch what goes on and things like that. So, you know, if it's possible, great. You know, I, the staff told me it's not mandatory, but you know, whatever's possible for the consumer. <laughs> Understood. I thank you very much for your time. Good evening. Sorry about that. They had the uh, speaker off. So, um, is there uh, now is the time to open up the public hearing, or do we have any speakers? No, sir. Well, then I close the, the public hearing. Then. <laughs> All right. So uh, now is the time to deliberate as a commission about this project, or to uh, receive a motion. Well, I propose a motion to approve resolution uh, number 2019-29 and to um, certify a conditional use permit for PEN 19004. Is that it? I keep reading. Well, you're you're uh, forwarding staff recommendation to approve it as right. as proposed. As okay. proposed. All right. Do we have a second? A second. All right. We have a first and a second. Uh, please vote. It's approved unanimously. Seven zero. Uh, staff wrap up on this one. Thank you. The Planning Commission is the approval body for this application. Uh, the action made by the Planning Commission is appealable. Any person desiring to submit an appeal would need to do so in writing to the attention of the Community Development Director, uh, and they must state the specific reasons for the appeal and file the appropriate filing fee. Uh, if an appeal is filed, it would be scheduled for a future hearing in front of the City Council. Thank you. Good. Thank you. All right, the next item on the agenda is uh, item three, a request for conditional use permit uh, PEN 18-0262 for a commercial cannabis dispensary. The applicant is uh, J. Michael Pora. Um, we have staff re a staff report. The staff report will be presented by our contract planner, Jeff Swack. Great. Chair Sim, 
Sims and members of the Planning Commission, good evening. The request is for a conditional use permit for California Green World to open up a commercial cannabis dispensary of 5,100 square feet located at 12125 Day Street, located in the Canyon Spring Shopping Center. And as you may well uh, be aware, the Canyon Spring Shopping Center is located north of um, north of the 60 freeway, west of Day Street, and south of Box Springs Road. This shows an aerial of the shopping center, and the location for uh, Building L is in the southeast corner of this center. And there are two images on the left side showing the frontage of the building as well. The previous tenant was Sage Co uh, College, and the applicant uh, will be developing 5,100 square feet of the building. The building itself is 21,285 square feet. The general plan and zoning, the project is consistent. The zoning for the site is community commercial, which allows by CUP, um, a, uh, approved by Planning Commission, a commercial cannabis dispensary. We look at the uh, site plan itself. The property is outlined by that uh, dark black line. The property contains 33 parking spaces on the west or in front of the building. The building itself, as I mentioned, is 21,285 square feet, of which 5,100 will be the area for the proposed dispensary. And then behind the building or to the north and east is another parking lot consisting of uh, 33 parking spaces as well. We look at the floor plan that's being proposed. Um, if you look at the bottom of this image, the applicants are, are uh, proposing to remove and replace an existing landscape planner that runs virtually the length of this space and replacing it with a 36 inch high um, planter um, as well as constructing a 36 inch high uh, concrete wall that will be in front of the two doors that exist. And the reason for the construction of those barricades is to prevent vehicles from being able to drive directly into the tenant space. Um, they will also be um, uh, filled with plants uh, once again, so it will be an aesthetic improvement to the building. Um, in addition, uh, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner of this uh, floor plan, they will be adding an extra door. The reason for that door is that will be the entrance, the ingress and egress, to the vacant space, which is the remainder of the building, 16,185 square feet. In looking at the floor plan, what's being proposed for the dispensary is on the right-hand side, uh, 900 square feet. That is the customer waiting area. To the left and in the center of the site plan will be a 2,000 square foot uh, display of product and a sales area. And then on the far left-hand side uh, will be restrooms. The rooms along the top of the image here will be private, only for employees. They'll consist of a, a vault for money, uh, secured storage of product, and two rooms for employees. And uh, one is an office area on the left side, and on the far right side will be an employee, um, like a break room, for example. As you look at the upper left-hand corner, there is a, a proposed hallway that will connect the parking that is north and east of the building uh, to the dispensary. And the reason for this is the employees, as well as deliveries for the, um, the two secured parking spaces, are located in the parking area north and east of the building. This is the way that uh, the employees will be accessing the dispensary. Um, it's important to know that there will be a fire-rated demising wall constructed that separates completely the 5,100 square foot dispensary uh, from the vacant uh, remainder of the building adjacent. So there is no going back and forth between the spaces. Um, security provisions, the security plan that was submitted by the applicant identifies that there will be a total of 32 cameras um, for this facility. Six, approximately 16 on the interior and then 16 on the exterior of the building. So the cameras on the exterior will focus on the entrances, ingress and egress, as well as the two parking areas uh, for this proposal. 
In addition, there will be between one to two armed security guards at any one shift. The hours of operation for the proposed dispensary will be 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven days a week. And the security guards uh, will be armed. So it's up to the decision of the management whether or not there'll be one or two security guards on hand during a particular shift, depending on how busy that shift will be. In addition, um, um, odor control is always important for any sort of cannabis uh, use. And the applicant has submitted an odor control plan, which as required by our municipal code, uh, requires that any of the particulate matter or odors are screened before the air is exhausted into the surrounding spaces or into the atmosphere. So by using um, either carbon or gel filters, they will filter out all of the odors from this so that they will not be seeping to the businesses on the north and south side of this uh, dis proposed dispensary, nor will it be exhausted so that people can smell it um, in the public areas of the parking lots. Um, finally, uh, staff has included two letters that we've received, one in opposition and one in favor. They're a part of your Planning Commission packet. Um, the applicant is in attendance tonight with the attorney, the architect, and two partners. If you have questions for them and this and staff report, I'd be happy to answer any questions that the commissioners have. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any questions? No, I would just like to say, so they've met every requirement so far. Everything's been done. All Correct. I have a question on the demising wall that separates. So that this was in the what was this used to be a Toys R Us or something at one time a long as time ago. It, right, as I understood, the, the original tenants Toys R Us and Babies R Us. Yeah, this space and the space larger space to the south. So it, when they have so this is they're carving off a, a five thousand or whatever this is uh, square feet off of this bigger building. So the demising wall. What what kind of construction is that? Because you. If somebody was able to get into the other building, you know, and they wanted to do nefarious activities to get into this building, I mean, what kind of wall is this that's built in there? So the, this, the building to the south is occupied, and the, the, diff the demising wall, as you know, will separate the 5,100-square-foot dispensary from the remaining 16,185-square-foot vacant space. I believe the construction will be block wall. Um, and that's up to the applicant to determine what sort of construction they will use to meet the fire rated requirement that building and fire um, are requiring of this project. I'd be, I, I'd be interested in when the applicant, you know, comes up, whatever that, or maybe they don't know yet what the building, haven't submitted building plans, but. Um, Absolutely. Any, any other uh, questions? I have a question, Chair. The applicant chose to open at nine. We have the city ordinance that allows other uh, dispensaries to start at six. Let's say in the in the in the future, uh, are they allowed to go to six at any time they want? Well, the state law um, is what, uh, as you know, is what sets the the range of hours for a business. Um, currently, the applicant is saying nine a.m., which would be a little bit later than the state law would allow. Um, if they would want to change the hours of operation, open up sooner, um, that potentially could require them to come back for uh, modifying the conditional use permit, so come back before the Planning Commission to request extending the hours of operation to open up earlier. So they will have to come back, so whatever choice they make tonight, it stays, and then if they want to open at 6, they'll have to come back to the Planning Commission in the future. Is that what you're saying? Or they have a choice to go either or. I've been corrected. Um, they are proposing to be open from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m., but the condition of approval, because we've had um, other tenants, uh, other uh, business operators that weren't sure if they would need to be open earlier, so the condition actually reads 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So if they choose to open up earlier, then they would not need to come back before the Planning Commission to um, open up earlier. It is part of their condition. Thank you so much. I wanted to clarify that one more time for myself personally and, and for the future. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> this is Rick Sanders in the back row here. I wanted to add a clarification on the, the question you had regarding the demising wall. If it's important to you, I want to make sure that the record's clear. The demising wall is unknown at this point if it would be block wall construction or if it would be regular framed. 
-hmm. The demising wall it has to do with the fire separation between the space on either side of the wall, and it usually has to do with the thickness of the of the drywall. Mm -hmm. The other thing is the demising wall would go all the way to the top of the roof, and, and that would provide some of the uh, relief from odors and stuff going back and forth between the space. But at this stage, we're, we're approving the entitlement, not the construction plans, and so those would be ironed out as, as part of the building plan check and tenant improvement plans. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Any other uh, questions before we invite the applicant to? Uh okay, uh, if the applicant would like to come up and address the commission. Good evening, Chair Sims, fellow commission members. Uh, my name is Attorney Justin Rodriguez. I actually represent uh, the applicant, and he will uh, be uh, speaking in just a moment, but I just wanted to introduce myself and uh, just very much say that we're very pleased and thankful with the diligence of staff, and we very much respectfully submit on their uh, recommendations towards approval. Uh, as I'm sure the commission and staff has cited, the project, as, as proposed, has been conditioned and conforms to all of the development standards of the community commercial zone and the design guidelines for commercial developments prescribed in the city's municipal code and the city landscape standards as well. So we very much uh, look forward to, uh, to being a part of the community and a very uh, vibrant uh, business that increases foot traffic in the and benefits the neighboring uh, businesses as well. There will be a multitude of employment opportunities that are high paying jobs, which we very much uh, know will be a big asset to the community as well. Um, we have been made uh, aware of the opposition that was cited earlier uh, by Mr. Zwack uh, in an opposition letter. Uh, we were happy to reach out to that party and we look forward to keeping lines of communication open with them. I think, uh, as they will see, uh, we anticipate that the way our business is uh, expected to operate and its conformance and compliance with all the code is going to be top notch. It's going to be like an iPhone store, essentially. And we basically look forward to working with them uh, to be a, a valued neighbor, a valued partner. Uh, to make sure that any of their concerns are assuaged and that they understand that we very much uh, appreciate their concerns and uh, will address them. As you can see, the security, uh, the construction, and really every aspect of this project is, is being done with a, a complete attention to detail and compliance. Um, on that, I would uh, submit to and defer to the Mr. Pora. Hi, my name is Michael Pora, and uh, I am the uh, applicant and business owner. Uh, I would like to thank the Planning Commission for for uh, you know for helping us out to get the CUP approved and uh, moving this forward. Um, <laughs> my attorney has uh, pretty much said everything that uh, you know that would probably have to be said said on the on behalf of the business. Um, but I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Questions, commissioners. Commissioner Harris. Uh, yes, if, if this project were to be approved, um, what criteria would you use um, to determine whether you would have one or two security guards? Uh, basically, uh, the, w the, way, the way it really works is uh, the, bu the busier hours of the day, which, uh, you know, is really the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the busier hours of the day is, is where we would have the two security guards. And uh, whenever it, whenever it slows down uh, is was when we would uh, you know have the one. Uh, it's at at the beginning. What we normally do is we go overboard at the beginning. So most likely we're planning to have two, maybe three at the very beginning. And as we see what's necessary, we'll scale things back. But we always go overboard at the beginning in regards to security and cameras and uh, you know as far as build outs to make sure that the building is secure. These things we always go overboard. To make sure that there that we don't have any problems uh, that arise from from the business, uh, I do have quite a bit of experience uh, in Be in Las Vegas, and we you know we were the pioneers in Vegas. We opened up you know from from the beginning, and um, uh, we have not uh, you know faced any problems, and everything uh, runs very smooth. 
and uh, you know, it uh, you know I, I don't foresee any problems. We we are one hundred percent planning to uh, do the most we can to protect the 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 uh, community, the investment, the you know the 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 business park, every everybody and everything involved. It, it it's in everybody's best interest to to run a top notch uh, business. Um, just one more uh, question. So I, I assume that if there, if you drop the security down to one g security guard and there was uh, s loitering or, you know, monkey business going on in the parking lot, you would bring back a second uh, security guard. Is that, cr would a that be correct? Absolutely. And that security guard that we're talking about is an outside the front door security guard. We're not talking about the security guard being inside uh, checking IDs as uh, that's not what we're talking about the armed security guard I'm talking about an out an outside the front door security guard that is in the parking lot uh, uh, you know taking care of everything and making sure that there is there that everything is running smoothly okay, thank you very much uh, Commissioner Stevens you do yeah have I have a question um, I'm a little bit confused um, now you're the applicant and are you also the owner of the building I am both I'm one of the I'm one of the owners of the building. I own 20% of the building. Okay, so it's kind of like owner operator? Yes. Okay, yeah, because I was a little confused as to whether you were going to be a tenant or whether you were, I thought you were the owner, yeah. or at least part owner. Exactly, I, I am. I'm like okay, I that, was, that was my, I wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question, Chair. Welcome to step number two. <laughs> and why I say that is because now you're entering conditions yes. that we are holding you responsible to, as your attorney mentioned, because that's important to us, the commissioners, and to the city, that you understand the conditions that you're going to be obligated to, okay? Absolutely. And I appreciate that. Thank you. If you get approved tonight. I like the separate door for the employees so they don't have to use the front. Everything is through the back or whatever it may be. Are they going to have special badges that they will wave to the security guard? Yes. So it's a, it, it's a, it's basically like a credit card size, uh, you know, uh, thing, and 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 they just wave it by the door, and that'll open it up for them. So yes, they do. So that document, that document, the, the the hour and the time they walk in exactly. In, inside, which in which employee exactly? Which employee came in exactly at what time? When did they walk out for their lunch break? You know, it, we everything is one hundred percent documented, and I I believe as you, as the panel already knows, our our camera system is also it's not just for us; it's also for the city. So every everything is, uh, you know, you guys have to access to to the to all the footage. As you can tell, my. Uh, I always ask the question about cameras because that's what protects all of us. Absolutely. And it also helps on law enforcement. I'm glad to hear that you're going to put up 32 cameras, 16 inside and 16 outside. So with tonight's approval, you're not going to have any problems if there's a crime to hand over the civilian video over to law enforcement. There will be no problems with that at all. Absolutely not. Okay. I just want to make sure that we understand that because that's important to the city. Absolutely, and if I could just add, uh, Mr. Poor is very much aware that the success of this business really depends on trust with the community, with the clients, with its neighbors, and so that's why no corners are going to be cut with regards to security, with regards to cameras, with regards to our par participation with law enforcement, because we understand that if we can nurture and encourage and develop the trust between all of the parties involved that it really benefits everyone. It's going to be something that not only benefits <coughs> our business, but will benefit the neighboring businesses and the community as a whole. So I would just uh, very much like to stress that that's one of our, our, our top priorities really is to make sure that safety, that trust, um, and the effectiveness of the operation is, is top notch. The public is, 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 is what we're worried about, and honestly, when, uh, when a customer comes in and they want to park their car and they, want, and, they need to, and they want to walk into our dispensary, they need to feel comfortable with the process from the minute that they're driving up, they purchase their product, they get in their car and they leave, they should, not, they should feel very comfortable with the whole procedure and it, it, should, uh, uh, it should be very smooth. 
So, and that security is a big part of it. I have one more. Sure. Um, yes. I was there yesterday and I looked at the, well, I know the area quite well, but I looked at it well. You have glass doors. Are they gonna be um, glass proof or you're gonna put behind something behind the, the, the window? Or, and also with the, that, are you gonna have 24 hour security? Because if you're not gonna have 24 hour security, I need to know how you're gonna protect those windows from being broken into. Um, <laughs> good. It's a good question. Um, we we have not when the when the business is closed. We do we do not have twenty four hour security. Uh, you know at, at the other locations and, and you know that we have in, in Las Vegas. Um, you know it hasn't been a problem for us. So it wasn't something that uh, you know that we thought about uh, addressing. They they can't drive a car into it. Uh, you know it it's not something where they would be able to break it by hand or with a or with a you know, with a bat or anything like that, it, it, it is strong enough where, uh, you know, it won't be, it's not, it's not the existing uh, glass doors that you see currently, if that's what you're, if what, that's what, what you're asking yeah, me. What I saw it today, is, yesterday. yeah, it, it, that will not, those, those will be changed out there. There we go. The, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't understand, you know, quite, but. In other words, <laughs> you're going to make a change. Abs Abs absolutely. And, and those, all of those issues will also be addressed during the construction phase as well. All of those parts of the development will be included. Thank you so much for the answers. Um, my question is um, to be specific about the one to two to three armed guards. Is that in conjunction with the outside guard, inside guards? So is that outside one to two, three possibly, but there's always going to be somebody inside? Exactly. Well, uh, we have to have a security guard inside checking the IDs. Mm -hmm. uh, so there will always be that one inside, but we'll always have one to two on the outside as well. Okay, so overboard, then scale back. Exactly. From the outside only. Exactly. But inside is... Inside is always going to have one. Okay. Needs to. That's and I, I think um, Commissioner Sims was saying, you know, yours is kind of a little unique in that uh, some of the others that we had looked at uh, or existing properties, yours will be next to or in the same building with a, a vacant property. So the, the, the thought process would be not to, to, to come in to rob or break in directly to you. It would be going to the vacant property and just knock down the drywall and go right inside. So that's where we're looking at. So well, how, well, how do we insure against that? Because that's that would be the way to go. Yes. So going to the vacant property, you can hang out there all you want to and just go in through the, through the drywall. I think so, you're inside the building. Yeah, we haven't gotten into the, the details as far as the, uh, the adjoining walls, how they're going to be secured. But I will tell you in Las Vegas, uh, we have block wall, rebar, and cement filled. There is yeah. no getting into those. Okay. I mean, it's, it w the security is number one, uh, the most important thing. So that's something you're looking at yes. here. Well, that's what we did in Vegas. Uh, once again, I, I will make sure, Barb. we're going to make sure that this building is top notch and, uh, and we'll spare no expense at making sure that it's, it's got to be built like a vault. I know that we know this and, and uh, I would just add that uh, security benefits the neighbors it benefits the neighbor adjoining businesses but uh, of course in our own self-interest we want to protect our product we want to protect our clients we want to protect uh, everything uh, as it relates to our business so it's very much in our interest as well to make sure that all of those issues are, are addressed I think we've all seen enough uh, bank bank robbery movies where uh, you know they go through the walls and whatnot so we're gonna make sure that those things are it's like Fort Knox well, is not just that I mean you'd look at the news and you hear what's going on there have been dispensaries that have been smash and grab in Los Angeles and this particular site is right at the the corner of uh, I can go I can go westbound 60 freeway I can go eastbound 60 freeway I can go 215 south so it makes it say hey look I can get away real easy at that corner and you wouldn't know what direction they went into. That's what's saying, you know, security has to be a. So, you know, from my experience, if if, if the build out is done correctly, uh, there is no smash and grab. Uh, the, I believe most of the stories that you're that you're listening to and, and hearing are, uh, I'm well, I know per, I know that a lot of those are unlicensed dispensaries that have no no money put into TIs and and uh, really no security, no camera, nothing. Honestly, it's it's not. These are. This is not the kind of uh, location that we would be doing uh, building out. Uh, it's uh, it's a it's a really large investment, and it'll and and like I said, it 
it's un it's it's unpenetrable so it, it it we we will make sure that uh our building cannot be broken into thank you any other questions one more excuse me <laughs> uh, uh, my experience is with carbon uh, th that's what we use in Las Vegas uh, the 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 gel filters um, I don't have experience with and, and we haven't used them the carbon filters is the industry standard that I know that everybody has been uh, using you would have taught me something today when yeah. I saw the word gel. Okay, good enough. When thank you so much. I heard earlier about the gel too, and, and we, uh, my experience was with the carbon. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, are we uh, good? Oh, not quite good yet. Commissioner Harris. Uh, yes, I was wondering, um, since you're not going to have 24-hour security um, in the building, you will have motion detectors that would immediately, you know, Yes. Call, call the police the, if somebody uh, automatically call the police. Yeah. Yeah. So all the camera system will auto automatically notifies uh, us ourselves uh, that there is that is a, that there is a motion, and yes, we will. It, it will automatically call the police. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Now are we done? Are we done? All right. Thank you very much. Okay, now's the time to open uh, the public hearing. Do we have any public testimony? Yes, sir. We have two, Frank Tovar and Daniel Reed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the commission. My name is Dan Reed. I represent Canyon Springs Investment Trust. Initially, I did note that you approved another CUP for another dispensary. I wanted to point out something that has not been mentioned here at all. There is a fundamental difference between this property and the other property that you approved. This property is subject to the Sterling Davis Community Interest Development. It's a community interest development. A standalone property like the other CUP you approved have fee interest title to the entirety of their property. That's not the situation here with the applicant's property. The applicant, we heard much discussion on the parking lots. Applicant doesn't own that parking lot. The parking lot is common interest property. This applicant owns just a 5.31% interest in the entire plaza. That's based upon a 22,000 square foot building. Their interest is de minimis if we're talking about a 5,100 square foot building. My client owns 74 and one half percent of that plaza. The, da the Sterling Davis Common Interest Development takes into consideration my client's interest as does the CCNRs. The applicant's property is subject to CCNRs which run with the land and provides my client as the majority interest owner who is disproportionately impacted by any kind of business that operates there to say he disapproves if he finds that the plaza's reputation is injured by the business or the business is found to be annoying. The very fact that we hear they're going to need one, two, or three armed security guards, and it needs to be like a fortress, using their term, like a vault, speaks volumes as to what's going to be happening. Don't take my word for it. My client evicted someone who was operating a commercial cannabis business there recently. I take Patty Posey's. I don't mind to interrupt the speaker. We, we record these, so if you just speak into the microphone. Yes. So I, I, you're moving away. I just want to make sure you, you stay close to the mic. Thank you, sir. And, and just one other thing. We don't have the timer. The timer should be up on your right screen, sir, but no, it is not on the screen. Uh, oh. well, I'll give you a little, a little bit more time. Okay. It, it's three minutes, but we'll May give I you continue? an extra 30 seconds. Okay. So. Patty Posey, the code enforcement officer I worked with to evict that prior tenant, 
This situation, we talk about the security guards. My client has to maintain all of the common area, including the security guards. Unlike a self-contained lot where the loiterers are stayed on that lot, here and what we experienced was the people buying the cannabis were scattering all throughout the entire complex. Why? So they can go smoke, loiter, drink, what have you. Their security guards aren't covering that. My clients are covering that. We've already lost tenants. We lost Rising Stars Business Academy. They left due to the commercial cannabis activities. We have schools that are on site. You have a trampoline facility, which by ordinance 9.09.294 fits within the 600 foot radius, which precludes the operation of a dispensary within 600 feet of anything that is considered to be an arcade, which is an amusement center having coin operated games, which the trampoline center falls within that ordinance. This is simply not the type of location to have this type of business. And it disproportionately impacts my client who's already lost tenants because of this type of business. Okay, we'll, the, the, uh, we're, we're a minute over now, so. Okay. Well, it, and finally, I'll, I'll just wrap it up. Mr. Frank Tobar is here. He's the manager for the entire complex. And again, that includes the common area surrounding the applicant's property. And what we experienced, and Patty Posey, Code Enforcement Officer for City of Moreno Valley can attest to it, excessive littering, loitering, vandalism, um, idle congregation, consumption of alcohol on there. We had to increase our security to take care of that, not just where this was operating, but all throughout the center. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Commissioners, Frank Tovar, I'm the property manager for, for Canyon Springs Investment Trust. Uh, I want to shed some light on the human factor. Could you, Commissioner, can you put that, that um, map of that property back up? What, what I'm trying to point is within 1,000 feet, we have a mosque. Within 900 feet, no, not that one, the one of the, the property. Within 900 feet, we have a dance studio. We have about two, 300 uh, students, impressionable uh, kids that are learning the arts. Within 700 feet, we have a church. Within 650 feet, we have uh, a, a Reales gym. About 850 kids, impressionable minds. Within another 650 feet, we have a, another church, Generation Church, which is more or less in the middle there, the red roof. Um, within another seven, 700 feet, we have another church up there. Thousand, you know, a thousand uh, parishioners. Um, we have right across from that parking lot, we have a teachers union. So the idea is great for, for you guys to, to generate revenue, but it's not in this location. This is a family property. We have families that come and patronize const your constituents. They come and patronize our property. Um, this would be detrimental to the public's safety. On the contrary, when we evicted this cannabis, this illegal cannabis dispensary, we had a lot of trouble. We had shootings there. We had uh, people dis destroying our property. Um, loitering, alcohol left at the property unconsumed. It was just, it was horrendous. So uh, one guard, two guards, three guards, they're not gonna do anything. We'd have to have umpteen amount of guards to protect the, the public. So what I, the point is, is we have too many families that come to our property and this is gonna be definitely something that is not going to be is counterproductive to our our community that's it thank you very thank you. much the other uh, speakers no sir okay uh, would the applicant like to address any of the comments made
Chair Sims, uh, Commission members, <clears throat> thank you for the opportunity to respond. First things first, uh, needs to be made very clear, let's compare apples to apples here. Uh, a major distinction that was not mentioned by either party that just stood here a moment ago, and it's one that I think is just absolutely goes to the heart of all of those problems they listed later, was that that prior cannabis business was unlicensed. It was illegal. It didn't do anything in terms of its interest in compliance, conforming with the code, conforming with any laws whatsoever. It was the Wild West for that business because it was an illegal business. That is the complete opposite of the way Mr. Pora and our business has operated and applied and gone through this process that started almost a year ago. It's been, I think, as the staff duly noted, everything has been complied with, everything has been conformed with. I mean, there was not, all the I's were dotted, the T's were crossed. And so to compare it with an illegal business that was done, and I very much uh, appreciate those concerns. You know, if uh, our clients aren't safe, that's not good for our business either. But just because we require security guards, just because we uh, reinforce uh, our location, doesn't mean that it's a bad business. In fact, uh, a bank has security guards, a bank has vaults. It doesn't mean it's a bad business. It means it's an asset to the community as a whole. And so I think the concerns that they've uh, conveyed, although they're very important to us, they just don't apply to this particular business, this business plan that's been uh, submitted to you. Um, we very much, uh, the, all of those concerns that we mentioned earlier with regards to security, cameras, all the things of that nature, um, they go to the heart of the success of our business. And I would just mention that there's also tattoo parlors, there's, a, I think, a liquor store uh, on the premises as well. And we recognize that there is a perception, and I think maybe it's unfair and maybe um, some folks haven't evolved quite the way that uh, we would hope they would, but cannabis serves a very important segment of the community. It has medicinal purposes. The scientific uh, rewards have been uh, noted in studies from Stanford and just ev about every other, uh, the National Institute of Health as well. So we understand that maybe there are some, of, there are some folks who aren't there yet, but we re very much aim to keep the dialogue open. We very much uh, will address their concerns and um, we appreciate the opportunity to move forward because I'm sure that a lot of those concerns uh, will be uh, essentially removed after they see how we conduct business. On that I submit. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any other uh, comments, Ashley? Or we're closed. Okay. No, okay, sir. Then I um, cl uh, close the uh, public hearing then. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, that's uh, you've heard it. So it's time to deliberate. I believe it was unfortunate that they had a very bad experience with um, dealing with a tenant that was actually operating okay. illegally. And uh, but the city does require very stringent rules to be followed, and if they are not complied with, they will be shut down. The the uh, the neighbors will not have to do it because the city will do it. There's just no ands, uh, buts, or ifs because we're not going to tolerate any kind of uh, activity that the other place was doing. It was unfortunate that they had a tenant in there that was allowed to do things and then they had to be evicted. There's no eviction here. It's just closed down. So um, I, I don't see any reason not to give them. A conditional use permit if if they do have um, the issues with their neighbors that's an issue that I don't think we need to really get into yeah I, I uh, 
Yeah, the, the uh, CUP process and the effort that has to go to get through one of these things, whether we agree with the business or whatnot, but it, there is, it's, a, it's an allowable business within the city with, pursuant to the various codes and requirements. And it, the issue here with, you know, multi ownerships with uh, different uses and whatnot, that seems like almost a contracts or a, a real estate law type issue that's probably not within our purview to to deal with and it's more of a issue of it's if it's is this project stand on its own merits to fit within the the requirements to approve a CUP so well I'm always curious about an unlicensed business can actually get a lease um, what kind of background check was done I know I have leased spaces before for an art little art gallery and I know they check me out really well before they give me a lease. So I have that confusion how this other group was allowed to actually get a lease and operate there. That's a big confusion to me. Um, that's just my, my opinion, but I think this is a pretty tight operation. I think this gentleman has a business that he has run before. He knows the rules. He's willing to accept the rules. Um, I don't see any problem in approving this. Any other comments? I have some, Chair. Yeah. Sure. I went over the report quite a few times. And every time a dispensary comes to the commission, I put everything that I got into it to make sure that the staff does their part correctly, that they write the report correctly to make the applicant understand his steps, step two. And I looked at it. I like what they put in the report with the surveilling, the surveilling cameras, how the camera's gonna capture everything around the building to help law enforcement with crime. There is no cameras at all throughout the whole entire plaza. So if they would've had cameras throughout the plaza, there would've been less crime there. That's for sure, okay? With that, they have the order, the order system and the system is not going to allow the cannabis to leak into the adjacent areas and and throughout the building and outside and uh and for those um persons that are shopping they're not going to smell anything that's another good thing that is in the report okay the other thing that's in the report that i enjoy looking at also is the knock box that allows the fire department in an emergency, if, this is an, if, this, if there is an emergency, to be able to go in the facility and to take care of the problem. They are there are 60 conditions this, this applicant must apply by. And like the commissioners mentioned, if they break any of the rules, they come back to us and then we deal with them personally again. The staff did a great job to ensure us, commissioners in the city of Moreno Valley, that this business will be run legally and correctly. So I don't see any problems of them having that business way over to the left side of the corner of the plaza that they own, okay? So they have the right to have a business. And I'm grateful for the other 75% that's out there that he's doing community service and take care of the rest of the residents that are out here. So I like the project, I like what the staff did, and I hope it gets approved tonight so we can move this epic and over to step number three. Any other uh, comments or, or a motion? I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. You guys ready? I recommend that we approve resolution number 2019-24. 
You have a second? I second it. All right. We have a first and a second. Uh, Commissioners Korzak and Stevens, please vote. It's approved 7 0. Staff wrap up. The action taken by the Planning Commission tonight. Um, uh, the Planning Commission is the approval body. Your action is appealable. Any appeal that would be filed would need to be directed towards the, plan the community development director in writing, specifying the reasons and with the appropriate filing fee. If an appeal is, re is received, it will be directed to the city council. Uh, and there are 10 days to file the appeal. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, I'm oh. sorry. Make that 15. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so 15 days if there's an appeal, within, it has to be in writing. Okay, uh, the uh, next thing on the agenda is other commission business. My agenda here. You know, I, I wanted to, oh, well, I guess, uh, is there any, so do we have any other commissioner business? Any uh, staff comments? I have uh, one okay. chair, if you wouldn't mind. If you notice, uh, sitting behind me, this gentleman right here without a name tag, we're going to get one for him. This is Darren Ziegler. He's a deputy city attorney in our office. I don't know if you've ever had an opportunity to meet him before or not, but he will be taking on the role as my alternate. Uh, he's uh, currently is legal advisor for the, uh, all the remaining boards and commissions of the city. Uh, so when I'm not here, Darren uh, will be available to assist, and I believe the first time that's happening is the July 25th meeting, if we're having one. Um, so I just want to introduce him to you and uh, look forward to having him work with you in the future on occasion as well. Good. Welcome on board. A uh, planning commissioner comments. I, I, I'd like to know, um, out of curiosity, we approve the uh, uh, <clears throat> the um, apartments at the uh, Moreno Valley Ranch golf course, and I seem to recall that the, the golf I, they did a lot of grading, and um, the uh, uh, in if I recall that there was supposed to be the golf course was supposed to be in operation by December. That was kind of the estimated of last year. So I just, if, you know, if it's not something we know about now, but if we could get a maybe an update at the next meeting, of what's going on with that project and, and so forth. The applicants are working on improvement plans for the clubhouse and other areas. So uh, you should see some progress. I know they're hoping to start construction by the end of the year. Okay. If, uh, okay. If I may add just a little bit, I was on the phone with uh, the representative from the uh, bridge development. It still is uh, being led by bridge development. Uh, the grading that you've seen on the property was uh, through a stockpiling permit to move dirt off of the uh, driver range, and it's being used to, to basically rehabilitate the golf course. So that's a, little, a lot of the uh, dirt movement it's been. Um, the applicant has assured us that their target date for opening the golf course is October of this year probably towards the end of October is what they're looking for. Um, their interest is to try and get the apartment project under construction by the end of the year if they can open the golf course. Uh, as you may recall, there was a condition put on the project that they could not basically put any sticks in the ground until the golf course was up and running. So right. that still is a, a prerequisite. And they also do need to put a, a $4 million uh, deposit in place uh, prior to uh, securing any permit. So those things are still in place. We're still working with them to uh, make sure they comply with that. If you need any further update than that, our staff could bring something back at the next meeting, but that is the, the, the gist of it at this point. So they, they, so they wouldn't have the clubhouse back up and running by October. That seems like a pretty short time well, frame. That is one of the things that we are, are talking with them. They do need to have uh, a facility to operate the golf course out of. They do want to operate out of the clubhouse. They do need to still submit tenant improvement plans, so the timing is getting a little close, and that's one of the things that we're talking with them is to make sure that they give themselves adequate time to get through the re review process. We believe there still is time to do that, uh, but it is getting a little tighter. Well, it would be good to get that done. That would that'd, that'd be a great project if it ever gets I going. I have a question. What's happening with the yum-yum donuts? <laughs> <laughs> 
They had two projects that we approved. Projects, one and I haven't Paris seen any anything there. happening. Real quickly, I want to make sure that we're not going off on unagendized items, but just a quick summary of that. Neither of those have an application submitted for building permits at this point. One was at uh, Day and Alessandro, and the other one was at Cottonwood in Paris Boulevard. Uh, and Chris, am I correct? Or is there something been submitted? Uh, for the Day and Alessandro uh, project, they did have grading uh, plan in review, but, but not, not building plans. No. Are there uh, planning commissioner questions, comments? Yeah, I was curious about the uh, nascent corridor. I just thought that was a gorgeous thing. Is that how far down the road is that uh, projected to start to take place? The corridor study that was done was a high level study. The mm -hmm. next step would be closer towards development, whether it was a specific plan or something else. It would be, um, it's still down the road. It's not. The corridor study that was done doesn't lead straight directly to development. Oh. So there would be more study or work that would need to be done for the site. I really like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's no more comments, then I uh, adjourn the meeting until when's our next meeting? July 25 or July 11th? July 11th. Have a good night. <laughs>